Last week, we studied soul sleep. Okay, I'm going to ask any of the new guys who aren't usually in this class if you know what soul sleep is. Eduardo, any ideas? No. All right, soul sleep. All right, so let me ask you guys this. What happens when you die? Your soul sleeps. When, okay. <laughs> when you die, when you, like, say to the, tomorrow, you have a heart attack. All right, boom. He's dead. We all go visit him. At the, at the hospital, and he's, uh, he's all dead over there. Is his soul <laughs> sleeping in his body, or has his soul departed and left to heaven, and his body's there dying and rotting? Okay, that's the big question. I don't know what you guys believe, and like I said, I don't know if it's the end of the world whether you believe one or the other. There's something more important as whether you're going to come back to life on Resurrection Day, that's, the, that's a really important thing, but I think it's something we should study. So, what I did today is I, I actually gathered all the verses, and we're going to select teams. We're going to just look at a couple of verses, and then you guys are going to give us your thoughts on it. Last week we talked about soul sleep, to where the Bible is very clear. Uh, I'm going to show you some verses. Um, so there's two different views on this. One is that when you sleep... Until Christ returns, and then all the dead in Him are resurrected. Right. So there's two views. So when you go to a, when you go to the next um, funeral, when you're looking at the body there, there's two views. Either one is that person's body's dead, but the soul is still sleeping in there, and the second is that that body's dead, lying there empty, and the soul is with God. All right. There's, that's the two views really broken down, and we looked at some verses. Um, Falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Do not hold this sin against him. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. All right, so there's lots of verses that talk about this. And we're not going to go over it because we did it last week. But today we're going to talk about what's called intermediate heaven. So intermediate heaven is the spirits of both the saved and the lost are conscious after death. All right, so a little, it could be scary, could be awesome. All right, that when you die... You're not really dead. That your soul is, is still conscious. The, the, the being inside the being is still alive and it's with God. Or somewhere else. Alright, so we looked at that. So today we're going to go over some verses. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to make teams just for the next 5 to 10 minutes. And I'm going to give you guys a few verses. Read them, read them in context. Read the verses before, after, get an idea, because you guys are going to go over, I'm going to let you guys have a minute to just to tell us what you think the verse is talking about. All right, these are all verses that are used to prove that there is, um, you, your soul does leave the body and go with God after death, or it is, it is still living. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a chance. So let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six... Seven, eight, about eight teams, eight or nine teams. And I have 12 verses, all right? So we're going to all split up, and we're going to read these. Um, and I'm going to give you five minutes, okay? Uh, and if you want to switch partners around a little bit, uh, too bad. Okay? <laughs> so as the soul was departing... <laughs> She called his name Ben Ani. All right, so this is a story of Rachel when she was dying, giving birth to Benjamin. Her, she, they said as she was dying and her soul was getting ready to depart or something, and her soul was departing. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it sounds like when you die, the soul leaves. All right. That's what it sounds like. Okay. There's other interpretations. It could be as she's dying. That's just what it means. All right. But that's what we're getting right now from Genesis. All right, so from Genesis, we're getting so so far, it's, that's what it sounds like. Let's go to team two, Browley and Josiah. Browley, are you the spokesman? We have the two of them. All right, go ahead. All right, for the ecclesiastics, um, it's saying that uh, when you die, the spirit does go to God. Okay, can you read the verse to us? All right, as the death returns to the earth as it would, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. All right, so it sounds like when... When the, the body goes back to the dust, the spirit goes to God who made it. Okay, that's what it sounds like. Again, we're not doing a deep study on it. We're just going on what it sounds like right now. Okay, 
from Ecclesiastes. That's what it, at least the verse seems to imply that. Eventually. And what else? And and first, Kings. first Kings 17, 21. All right, what's that one say? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah, and the life of the child came into him again and revived. And he revived. All right. So uh, I think there's other versions that talk about like the soul came into him. But this this is the... Uh, the story is, Elijah, this little boy died. Elijah stretched himself on him and prayed, and then life came back into him. And I, I, again, I think there's another version where it says the soul came into him again. So it, going with the theme is that coming, leaving, coming back, the soul does depart from the body. All right, that's what the verses are sounding like. So today, again, I'm not going to tell you guys what to believe. i I think for a lot of us, we've always believed the soul sleeps. But the idea today is there's verses that, there are verses that may make it seem like maybe it doesn't. Uh, so you guys are going to have to come up with that choice yourself. All right, Nathan and Connor, what do you guys think? Um, we've, um, what verse, sir? Matthew 22, 32. All right. That the soul leaves. Can you read the verse for us? <laughs> Uh, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the alive. alive. Oh, okay. So, what do you mean the soul leaves? <laughs> leaves? Leaves. Because he's alive. They're dead. Okay. All right. So, Isaac, what was it? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. They're dead, obviously. Mm -hmm. That was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But the verse is saying what? That he's not the God of the dead, he's the God of living. Alright, so it's implying that God looks at them like they're still alive. Alright? So that's, I don't know if it has anything to do with the soul departing, but, it, <laughs> but uh, again, you know, these are just, just read them. It's more of like, just think about it. The soul, they're, it's like they're still alive. Alright? That, that's, that's the point of that one. Elmer? Oh, or, Josh, thank you. What verse? Luke 20, 37 38. All right, let's hear it. But that the dead are raised, even Moses showed in the passage about the bush where he calls the Lord the God of Abraham and God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Now he is not God of the dead, but God of the living, for all, life, uh, for all live to him. Okay. Did I mess up? Did I give you guys the same one? No, no. Okay, my bad. All right, go ahead. What are your thoughts? I'm very close by so I'm not gonna. He's very confused because he lived softly. Okay. So again, you you uh, here's what we're doing today, exposing some <laughs> verses that make you think. Okay, that's the point. Josh didn't make it think. Any? What about anybody else in your team? Nothing. Yeah, we all do the same. Okay. So, again, the same verse, God says, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Even though they were dead, God still says, I'm their God. It's like they're living, the God of the living, okay? So that's just something to think about, all right? It gets worse. Let's read some more. Uh, Abigail. All right, thoughts? Guillermo, you were here last week. What do you think? Basically, when they were on the, on the cross, right? And you wanted to go with, with it. Oh, we're listening. <laughs> with Jesus, right? Right, right. And he had to, you know, so, don't forget about him. So what's the significance of today? Okay. So say we're talking about soul sleep and then the soul departs and go. It sounds like it's immediate. But we looked at last week, right? The Bible. When it was written originally, let's ask let me ask Connor this question. Just just to pick your mind, Connor. Uh, do you think the Bible was written in uh, the, what kind of grammar? Did it have commas and periods, exclamation points, all those things originally? 
You don't think so? What do you think? It was like, like how they used to talk when, um, like before English was really like a thing. Yeah. They used to like talk with different words and stuff. Yep. All right. I, I and this is a tough one. I didn't even know this. Hey, that's pretty good, man. <laughs> so the Bible is written without commas. It was written straight through, just written. Uh, no periods. The whole thing is is a big story uh, in each book. And uh, later on, at commas were added and all these things. So when it comes to that verse, the argument for that one is that the comma is in the wrong place. I say to you today, comma, you will be with me in paradise. Not, I say to you, comma, today you will be with me in paradise. So it could mean two totally different things. Uh, so that was that verse. And... Uh, if, it, if we read it with a comma there, it sounds like dies, boom, he's gone to heaven. All right, that's what it sounds like. So let's let's hear Steve's and Isaac's verse. So we got Luke 23, 46. Okay. It says, then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Oh, okay. So Jesus on the cross, dying. All right, what do you think from reading this verse, so, Isaac? Yeah, this is obviously soul departing kind it's, of into his father's hands he's like giving his spirit sounds like yeah. it yeah sounds like it of course there's there's another way to look at it okay god uh, i'm entrusting myself to you i'm gonna die whatever happens here on is yours you know that's the other way to look at it but it sounds like i'm dying my soul my soul's yours take it you know kind of thing um okay pretty cool Exposing, that's all. Jesse and uh, Carla, they have two two verses they're going to give to us. Go ahead. Okay, so I have 2 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. It says, So we always of good courage, we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from our body and at home with the Lord. All right. So this one says clearly that if we are in our um, body, our home, our temple, that we're away from the Lord, and that once we uh, die and we depart, we go to the Lord. All right. So clearly, um, I think he said <laughs> something else in there. Uh, you walk by faith and not by faith. No. Can you read it one more time? It, it's, it was. It was almost like he was looking forward to it. So we are away. Uh, so we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. All right. So he's saying, I'd rather be away, away from my body, and where? With the Lord. With the Lord. Okay. Yeah. So he's, he's, that's what it sounds like, is that, okay, what, what were your thoughts, sorry? That wasn't my thoughts. Okay, those are his thoughts. Uh, so it sounds like he was looking forward, or he was yearning, wanting to be with the Lord, and the only way to do that is to die, all right? And it's kind of weird that he didn't say, I can't wait to die, to, to sleep in the grave until Jesus comes back. I mean, it could, could be, could be, but... When I read that, that's what I was thinking. It's like, why is this guy so excited to die, man? I am not. You know, I want to, shoot, I got a lot of life to live. Still haven't gotten married. Still haven't gotten married, you know? But he wants to go. Um, Carla, can you give us yours? Yep. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. And he told them, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing in place of in the place of honor at God's right hand. And then he goes on to die. Pretty yeah. Right? Okay. So what do you think? Um, so this is right before he's about to die. So you know when like they for me it's like when they get like tunnel Whoa. vision and they Somebody's see the light. Popular. Go ahead. They see the light at the end of the tunnel before they're about to die. And um like the fact that he saw like, I don't think that's something like heaven or like Jesus standing on the right hand side of God is something that would be revealed to somebody. Going to the grave. 
that's just going to be asleep. Yeah. Like, it seems like it's going to, like, yeah. it. he's passing mm -hmm. on from this to that. Yep. He yeah, obviously had a vision. Uh, you know, he, whether it was real, you know, but he saw... It's how, when he was getting stoned, this, I don't know if you know the story, but he, Stephen was getting stoned because he was a Christian. And he, as he was getting stoned, it says he saw uh, Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father on high and uh, almost like a welcoming. And that, so, you know, it sounds like when he died, he goes up. It does mention in the same verses, asleep, too. So think about but yeah so that's a verse if you never heard it before it exists all right jesus welcomed him right there whether he welcomed him into the grave to sleep or he welcomed his spirit up it's a question all right we got two left kimberly you want to go first. excellent Eduardo. all right uh philippians 1 2023 as it is my eager expectation and hope that i will not be all ashamed but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall chose, choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. Let me ask you something. What does it mean when Paul says, I am hard pressed between the two? I'd rather my soul depart to be with the Lord. I think if I said it right, that's what it said. What he wants to like depart from the body. Sounds like it. Yeah. yeah. Again, anybody here have that like yearning to hurry up and die already? Okay, we got one. Well, we'll help you out, brother. No, All right. To, yeah, Fortnite kills don't count. Okay. Um, so that yearning to go and be with God. It sound, Paul was saying, as long as I'm in this body, I'm not with the Lord. I long to depart to be with Him. All right. And that. So when I read it, that's what I was. I was kind of confused. Like, why is he so? Why does he want to die so bad? Because he, it sounds like he knows he's going to be with Jesus immediately. That's what it sounds like. All right, Kim? Okay, I got Revelation 6, 9 to 10. He's, um, it says, When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the witness they had borne. They cried out with a, loud, with a loud voice, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? What do you think? Um, well, it says here that I, I feel like they're in a place, I feel like more in a dark place where they don't want to be cut, where they don't want to be. And so I guess, um, hold on. Well, then it just says, like, how long, will you, how long before you judge and avenge our blood right. on earth? Yeah. So, anybody, any thoughts? Says, Go ahead. Like their soul. Okay. Anybody, anybody else have thoughts on this? Elmer? Thoughts? Uh, okay, so Kim's verse was in Revelations, talking about the end when the fifth seal's open, or the fourth seal, I don't remember. Um, fifth seal. And it says the souls were there in the throne, or somewhere there, and they, the souls were asking, when are you going to avenge us? You know, like looking on the earth, when are you going to avenge us? So, what, if you're, you know, looking at that, you're thinking, okay, if they're dead, the soul, how could the souls be alive? Speaking to God when the resurrection hasn't happened yet. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the thought in there, is that, okay, maybe the souls are in heaven, waiting. Alright, so the last one, and then we're going to sum it up. Five minutes, go ahead, guys. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up on a, ham a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased to hear him. That's, I think that's good right there. Oh. That's good. Thank you. Okay, so 
So we could read one more because it's a, or okay, two more. Go ahead, go ahead. Until eight. And when this, and when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came out and touched them and said, "Arise, and do not be afraid." When they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Okay. So, what do you guys think? <coughs> Um, well, this verse definitely supports that um, idea there. How so? Um, because both Moses and Elijah were still conscious after death. We know that they died. Hmm. You know, they were... Uh, well, Elijah was risen up to heaven, and Moses, well, he, well, he, you know... Yeah. <laughs> so, I... Way before him, so... Uh, if I... Just, just interject, because we're out of time really quick. If, if you guys can get the story, if you didn't hear it... It was the transfiguration. Jesus went on mountain, and he was transfigured. It was called. He was like transformed in a way. He was. He rose up. All the glory came about, and three people met with him. Right. Well, God also. Was, it was, or just was Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah the cloud. Moses and Elijah were there. Okay. So Moses and Elijah came. Either just an illusion of Moses and Elijah, or it was really them dead homies came back to life all right so uh and and they obviously were recognizable somehow yeah because peter's peter said we can make tents for them as yeah. if they were really there right so i mean like that's questionable yeah because okay. peter didn't live in the time that moses and elijah were alive how do they know what they looked yeah, like yeah so maybe maybe they said this is who i am i don't know pictures <laughs> There's no pictures now. How do we know? Well, they were talking to Jesus, so something that they might have said might have put point to who they were. Yeah. Either it was really them, or the Bible's lying. So one or the other. Take your take your pick. And the weirdest part is that last one. When they lifted their eyes after being fearful, they saw no one. Right. So fear kind of threw everything in. All right. All right. So that was today. All these verses. Makes you think, maybe for some of you, you guys always thought uh, when you die, the soul sleeps. Okay, if you still believe that, fine with me, don't matter. Uh, maybe you always believed that the soul, when you went to a funeral and your grandma was there and there are souls with God in heaven. I don't know, is that true? I mean, there's certainly some verses that support it, but we read last week there's verses that say about sleeping. So it's going to take some careful study. There's one thing I want to leave you with. Um, and that, I think there's one takeaway from all this. Whether you believe either one, you know, it's it's not really going to matter. It's going to happen anyway. You'll find out. But there's one thing that it's it's in the Bible. There's this verse that says uh, in John three it says, "Unless you are born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God." Okay. Unless you're born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. All right. So that's a big thing. And born again means you're born again. You know, one guy asked, uh, what am I going to do? Go into my mom again and come out? How the heck's that work? But he's, no, you get, you, you, you get a whole new life. Yeah, and then there's this other verse I was going to read to you, but we don't have time. But it talks about that you, baptism is when you, uh, you know, like say, I forgot your name again now. The good looking guy, okay? Nice hair. All right? When he, say he decides to get baptized, when he's walking out onto the water, he's walking into his grave. Really. That's what he's doing because in, in Romans it says that just like Jesus died and rose again, when you're baptized, you die and you rise again. And that's your rebirth right there. So it's almost like you guys are, you know, for you who've done that, is you're already walking in a resurrected life. That's what it's. That's what it seems like. The Bible saying is, is that when you die, your your old life dies, and the new life is the one Jesus lived, is the one that we can live, and it's the one that sin has no power over anymore. And I, I think some of us may be still confused, like, well, I got baptized, but I still, I still want to sin. You know, I still like it for some reason. So the whole, the whole point is that when you die and you come up, Jesus gives you that power to overcome it. And you've got to walk in it. You know, that's the idea is you've got to walk in it. He's given you everything you need. Uh, so 
that was, I think there's a takeaway from it is that, you know, wh whether you believe one or the other, you can experience it right now. And that's when you, in genuineness, are born again and you, you're walking a new life. So hopefully we can do that. Next week we're starting a new, we're going over heaven and we're talking about resurrection, resurrected bodies. What are they, you know, the bodies in heaven, what are they going to be like? What we're talking about what's heaven going to be like and what does the Bible say, so... As you know, we're having Youth Day today. David and uh, Nathan are going to be the tithes and offerings people, uh, ushers. And uh, they don't get to take a percentage. Uh, and we're going to have singers and anyone else who wants to join us up stage to sing. Connor, like I said, you're welcome. If you want to come up, uh, we'd love to have you. We might call you up for the last song. Everybody, I mean, not just... I'm not going. I'm going to be with that. Okay, he's not going. <laughs> So, yeah, it's awesome awesome to see you guys. Uh, we look forward to service with you. So, let's pray as you are. Let's pray. You guys can take your phones. Don't steal anyone else's.